many people don't like me. One person told me, one man, one woman told me more than 10 years ago, he told me, the way this thing you are preaching, you will never make it in ministry. He told, she told me that you will suffer hunger. He said, you will never make it. Told me that you will never survive, you will never make it. I went back to God and was crying. God, is it, is it true I won't make it? <laughs> Kayanos, Kayanos, flesh tongues, Kayanos, flesh tongues. A new depth, a new fountain, a new depth, a new fountain. Kayanos! So when you run to heaven as a man of God and tell them, I have built an auditorium. They will take you and throw you on the scales of sonship. Throw your members on the scales of sonship and find out if the advancement, if the calibration is low, then the investment of heaven is wasted. That is why you can come to a nation and, and say, hey, we are five million Christians. And God will still be saying, I'm looking for a man. So who are those people that God is looking for? It will mean that God's system of measurement is lacking. That the calibrations of heaven has been thrown aside. That the measurements that we use is the things that is strange to the kingdom. Meanwhile, when you go to the Old Testament, the scripture made us understand that there is what is called the, the shekels of the sanctuary. That is the metric system of the heavens with which they measure things how can the scripture say that one day before God is like a thousand years that means that heaven is using a different metric system are you following me the heaven is using a different metric system from our own David piped into the realm by prophetic grace he said let the lifting up of my hands be like evening sacrifice at what point in your journey in the spirit does your hand, when you lift it, it becomes like a staff to the heavenlies. And your hands is able to draw down power. At what point? This is the knowledge of songs. <laughs> I have a burden and a journey in my heart. I, sometimes I pray that my days on earth will be enough to journey well into God. Hey, I don't have time. Even if I live for another 80 years, I don't have time. 80 years is not enough. If you know where we are going, the purposes of God captured in the ages, 50 years is not enough. When your eyes open, the mundane things will drop. You will find out why they keep trying to make Jesus king. He kept escaping. Kept escaping. Kept looking for things that is glorious, heavier. Paul said that I count all things dung for the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, of whom I've lost all things. Jesus Christ. What is he talking about? Show me my romance. Let me quickly run out of here. My romance. Let me see verse, verse 22, verse 22 now, verse 22 please, 22, for we know that the creation groaneth and traveleth where? In pain, in pain. I'm not sure you know. I'm not sure the average pastor knows. Doesn't know God's pain. You don't know the pain that is in the heart of God. If you know, many of us, many of us will not be in ministry. If you know the pain, your job as a minister of the gospel is to is to is to carry the same pain that God is carrying. That's or that's your job. And that pain and travail, that body will be driving you around. If it drives you to fast, you fast. Drives you to pray, you pray. Drives you to study, study. Drives you, it can drive you to the woods, to the bush. Can drive you from Lusaka to Copper Belt. Drive you to the villages. It's body that can drive a man. It's body. 
is what in that drove John the Baptist from the temple where his father is the high priest. By succession, when his father is true, who will take over him? But that thing drove him to the wilderness. When that body matured, people left the city and found him in the wilderness. He, I, I know is that is a part. Ah, you are asking me now. If you know where I'm coming from, man of God, the general, the men of God for several generations has done research and they said that people from where I'm coming from, we, they answer Christians by identification. You know, they are Christian by identification. But men of God has done research and find out that they don't go to church actually. What they do at best is what is called trade by butter or hedonistic Christianity or do for me, I do for you. You know what is do for me, I do for you. If you have anointing, I give you money, you pray for me. My problem is solved, they go. If your church oppressed that way, you are, you are not doing anything. You are, you, are, you are operating a business center. You see, as if I've hurt some people. You don't know God. Sorry, you don't know God. You need to go and start afresh and encounter Jesus. Let him give you burden. What you are doing is not ministry. It's not. If you don't want to do ministry, do another thing now. You see a must Do another thing. Be a doctor. Be accomplished. Be a businessman, tell them they must pay you money. You enter this one and it's straight by butter. <laughs> That's why Jesus flogged people. Why did he flog people? He entered his own house and they are buying and selling. Somebody, somebody asked me, Say, man of God, how much will I pay so that you will give me your own oil? Ah, I didn't know they sell oil. You know. Where I was disciple, I didn't know they sell oil. I told the person, come, let's pray together. Come, let's pray. Come, let me teach you prayer so that you will stand for yourself. He escaped. He ran away. He said, man of God, sell oil for me. Sell oil for me. <laughs> and many of you have fallen for it. Because you want people to come to your church, you don't have any other option but to sell oil. It's not as if you don't know that it's not the right template from heaven. You have not touched. When you touch God enough, people will be willing to hear the truth from your mouth even if it's unpleasant. You see the way I talk? If I have not touched something, you will not hear me. I know it. You don't like my face, but you will still hear me. <laughs> there is a force. We saw God on the mountains. He spoke to us. Looked at our face. Our face shined by that glory. When we come back, when we, if I speak, you know, there is an ancient oil. Ask him where we are doing. Huh? He's in the village. They don't do pastors. I've said no ministry. They gave me counseling. Somebody gave me 200,000 naira many years ago to go to Lagos and start ministry. He said he has looked at me and he found out that I have potential. I have some anointing and I have Z. He said, go to Lagos. Long to he, Lagos is like Lusaka, but it's obviously bigger than Lusaka. <laughs> I just want to give you people respect because I'm in your land. <laughs> I know it's very big. Even Portacot is bigger than Lusaka. Yes, I think so. But I, I want so that I will, you people will still accept me. So let me give you respect. So they told me, go to the city. 200,000, rent a hall. Start that. What you, The anointing you have, we, you will blow. You will blow in ministry. What does it mean to blow? Do you know what it means to blow in ministry? What does he mean? Ah, that is not God's pattern. Stop praying to blow. That is not, that is not ministry. Go and do another thing. Go and do another thing. Go and do another thing. This thing I'm preaching. Preach it in Nigeria. 
many people don't like me. One person told me, one man, one woman told me more than 10 years ago, he told me, the way, this thing you are preaching, you will never make it in ministry. He told, she told me that you will suffer hunger. He said, you will never make it. <laughs> told me that you will never survive, you will never make it. I went back to God and was crying. God, is it, is it true I won't make it? <laughs> Thank God for his mercy. I think the reason why God raised some of us is to show the younger generation that they can rise by righteousness. 